What's up everyone, my name is Pi and this is Ask SR Lounge where we answer questions submitted by you, SR Loungers. Now this week's question is from Catherine Walker who asked, hoping you could tell me how you have set up your editing room. Basically, would you have dark curtains, gray walls, black furniture? I'm really not sure what to do and hoping you could help me out. Now, Catherine, this is a great question, and I think that most photographers will agree with me when I say the key to any successful photo editing workstation is first disconnecting your internet. No, seriously, disconnect it. Now, once you've done that, there are several other things that you wanna keep in mind. When it comes to room setup, there's really nothing that special that you need to do. You don't need to have dark curtains or gray walls or black furniture. You know, back in the days of a dark room, setting up your room was actually quite important, but with digital editing, there are really only a few things that are worth mentioning. First, regarding the brightness of the room, you generally wanna make sure that you're working in a room with average light and with no direct light on your editing display. If you're editing in an overly bright room with, say, light coming directly on your display, then you generally will end up producing your images to too dark since you're basically compensating for the added light in the room and for the light on your display. All of our editing rooms are in standard lit areas but have no direct light hitting the displays. So beyond that, you really don't need to do anything special. Next, you want to make sure that you're editing on an IPS display. Now our studio's two favorite brands of IPS displays are the Dell UltraSharp line and the ASUS Professional PA line. Both of these are a great value in their overall performance versus their cost. And when it comes to these high performance IPS displays, they will generally come out of the box calibrated, but it's still always a good idea just to have a calibrator on hand for other displays. Now we use the Spider One Elite as it has support for multiple monitor calibration profiles on the same machine. Now, depending on how you like to edit, I'd highly recommend getting a high resolution mouse and also a Wacom tablet if you plan on doing a lot of retouch. Now, I do most of my work with my mouse except when I have to do extensive retouch work. And for my mouse, I'm using the Logitech G500. This is a weighted mouse with a very high DPI, basically a high resolution. It has a perfect tactile feel for editing work. It's actually designed as a gaming mouse, but it works great for editing. Now, when I need to do extensive retouch, I'm actually using my uh, Wacom Intuos tablet. Now, lastly, if you plan on being in front of your computer, for a long period of time, then one thing I would recommend you don't skimp on is a high quality chair. You can get something decent for a couple hundred bucks, but just be sure to try it out. If you got a little bit of spare change in your pocket, then I would opt for a Herman Miller Aeron, which is still by far the most comfortable and ergonomic office chair I've ever used. And because it has little air holes, it's nice and cool when you sit on it. It doesn't heat up like leather. That's it for this week on Ask SR Lounge. Remember, if you have a question, be sure to email it to us at ask at srlounge.com. My name is Pi, and I'll see you all in the next video.